Hello, and welcome to the Dr. Denise Show. This is Kathleen O'Toole and Dr. Denise right here. Hi, Dr. D. Hi, how are you? This is the Carve Out series on staying sane, and we can all use a little sanity at all times. <laughs> oh my goodness. And today's episode, we're calling Love Your Way. And Dr. Denise and I did some pensive thinking about this, <laughs> and we really loved it because with Valentine's Day coming up, people can get all kind of worked up about the day of romance and how it is supposed to be, but we're here to say it, it can just be your way, whatever works for your mental wellness. Yes. Oh my God. Doesn't that so much better? It like takes the pressure off. I, I feel like um, I know many people, at all, especially with this pandemic, because depending on what part of the country you're in and depending on your situation, you know, maybe you've been like almost like cooped up with your spouse or significant other, like most of the last couple of years. You're like, oh my God, I want to love my way, like away from them that day. So, I mean, there's just different... <laughs> Like, and then other people are like, on the like, oh my gosh, now let's start dating, right? So when you think Valentine's Day, just like I think all the holidays, I think it's time when people take inventory. I don't right. know if you can relate, like, because it's almost like the world's telling you, okay, celebrate love, let's do it on this day. And you and I are like, hmm, I don't know. I don't want to, we were like, is this love in the air? Like, no, let's just yeah. do love your way. Like, let's give people that autonomy to right. make make that day and make like the February love month what they want it to be. Right. And as as we were gearing up for this uh, podcast, I happened to see uh, in People News, Wendy McClendon Covey, she's an actress, we'll put her, her, her little uh, picture, beautiful picture in um, the show notes. But so she was just on uh, live with Regis I'm Regis. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Regis. No, he's not on live anymore. Uh, with Kelly and Ryan, that show, my mom loves it. Anyway, she was talking about her marriage to her husband and it's 25 years going. And she says, we don't celebrate Valentine's day. We just do us. She says, my husband makes me breakfast every morning. It's there's nothing in Valentine's day that you need to be a part of. It's a bust at our house. She told the um, Ryan and Kelly and she says he makes me breakfast every day. So our our you know we do it our way. Um, he refills my coffee. She goes all out for St. Patrick's Day. She says because it's her husband's birthday, and so she goes crazy. But nope. And many homes are like that. And then some people feel I, I think there's a thing like oh well we don't do this. We're not we're not you know with my partner. We're not you know a top notch couple. And no, that doesn't that that doesn't have to be right denise no absolutely and i think there should be every day like i love that i love that article you sent me cuz i had ordered my son something um he loves the rapper juice world rest in peace juice world and my son just loves his beat and loves his rhythm and i got him a gift that i gave him a week ago and i said you know this was going to i was going to give it to you for valentine's day but valentine's day is every day like i love you every day he's like oh yeah i love that we don't have to wait <laughs> i mean i know he loves his amazon packages anyways he's like right. like the minute they come in he's like is it for me um but i do think love your way i think we're really living at like this amazing exciting time where many people are talking about all different ways to love different types of being a couple different ways of mm -hmm. like owning your being single um, loving your family. I think, I think just that, I mean, I don't know you, what you and I could, I mean, you're, what are you doing at your house? Do you have any plans? Or is it pretty spontaneous? Tell us a little bit about your, well, my your, your Valentine's. My 10 year old got into the car, uh, after school this week and yesterday. And she's like, Oh, Valentine's day. It's on uh, the worst day of the week this year. And I was like, Oh, tell me more, you know, just to hear it from a 10 year old. She says, Oh, it's a Monday. And I'm like, so is, is that going to impact your plans? Your Valentine's day plans? <laughs> and she's like, well, no. <laughs> um, I just thought it was super cute. But, oh my gosh. You know, you're, just, mean, you know, you're just actually making me think I'd probably missed a newsletter on Valentine's day. So thanks. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> 
just to what show the whole mean? love. Well, kids have to do those Valentine's Day cards and at different ages. I just oh, remember yeah. this is just a, you know, actually, that's actually really interesting. You and I are doing the show and I'm just like, oh, Valentine's Day. So it's not like on the forefront of my mind either. No, and it, no. So, so yeah. So I think it's almost like this episode's giving people permission to right. find a way to show love any day and in any way. And I think, I think we all need that right now. I think we need permission to be more in control of how we want right. to do things. Right. I just want to go back to the, the kid thing really quickly. You know, usually um, we're, we're always trying to unload these Girl Scout cookies. So usually sometimes we like buy them all and give them to the kids. And we're not doing that anymore. It gets really too pricey for us. But um, last year we went to the dollar store. And we got these balloons on um, sticks. And then we wrote like a little note and tied it to each one. It took us like way too long. And I'm like, hey, hun, how did the kids like the balloons on the stick? She's like, it was the best gift. They took the balloons and they kept wailing each other in the head. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's funny. They used it as like a weapon. I mean, it's a bit, you can't get hurt. It's a soft little balloon. <laughs> but look at that's how they probably showed they loved each other that way, right? It wasn't yes. vicious. It was like, you know, sometimes you get the little kids get poked and oh, that's, you know, and, and even some of us adults do that with our flirting or poking, poke, you know, a little a little playing like that. So it's okay to be playful as an adult too. Don't lose that kid in you. Oh my gosh. No way. Like never. So do you have like, that's really fun. Are you, do you think you're going to do that again? Um, No, she, she, she thinks she's aged out of all that giving stuff. And so we'll just show the teacher some love with some sort of appreciation. But by the way, don't ever give a teacher a cup anymore. A teacher doesn't want a mug or a cup ever again. Just that's not the way to show them you love them. They've had enough of those cups. <laughs> well, it depends. I don't know. See, this is another love your way. Because what right? if you made it more personal? I, I took a picture of someone that I care about and I made a mug for the holidays, but it had like a secret meaning for the whole year. But was and it, it was a school like, teacher? No, 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 no. So no. I agree. No. Unless it's something school teachers like, like cause they, do they not don't need know what to get them. No, no. So speaking of love your way, I want to just be a nerd. I know that when we were doing the Ascension series, we did sacred sexuality, consensuality. I'm actually going to put links in the show notes to that. But I was, you know, I think a lot of people have heard about Dr. Chapman's Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages. And that was oh, written yeah. in 1992. So when we say love your way, I think I know a lot, I'm actually strategically single. And I'm finding on all the dating apps that all the men are like, here, they ask you on the apps. It's like, what are your languages of love? And, you know, a lot of people, men, well, I'm not trying to be gender, but they're like physical touch. But here they are. Here are the five love languages. Words of affirmation. Cap, you look great today. Quality Mm -hmm. time. Hey, let's hang out. Where do you want to go? Physical Mm. touch. Mm -hmm. Hugs, kisses, and acts of service and receiving gifts. Let me say those again. Words of affirmation quality time, physical touch, acts of service, and receiving gifts. And I I actually, just like we have the fabulous five for neurostyle, right? Like, those are like the fabulous five for languages of love. But I want to add that intuition or that unseen energy, the sixth sense, in discussing love your way. Because I think that there's unseen energy and an integration where you can kind of like have your own love style, whether you, and this is in any relationship, it can be in a love relationship, romance, it can be with your kids, it can be with um, a best friend. And I think Mm -hmm. that having, I don't know about you, but I love the article you sent me about the way um, she was so excited. It's Wendy, right? She was really excited as she was being interviewed. She even said, as my husband's just lovingly filling my coffee cup up. So those small acts of love lead to a sense of greater security, foundation, great self-esteem. And I feel like I want to almost declare love your way every day and live each moment in the moment of now and like really have fun. Because I don't think, I don't think you need, I think it's, we're here on earth. We have these like holidays that we're supposed to do, but I think it's really neat when we start to make it our own. And why can't we have that spirit of love every day? Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes I, I was thinking that something that we might want to talk about is 
love your way might be also about loving yourself. And from self-care to the deep, intrinsic self-love that, that's part of your pyramid of self-love, awareness, self-love, and altruism, that, that's a Dr. Denise-ism. But loving oneself, it can be tricky. It starts with that. And I think even, I don't know, how are you coping with the whole loving yourself, like being a mother, finding time? Like maybe we can just do, like, what is self-love and what is self-care? Because that is, you know, you know, finding your own way, like you said, do you have some tips of like what yeah. you do that are just your small little like cuddles to yourself? So, I mean, there's two, there's two kind of topics here. One is all encompassing and one is a subset. So I feel like self-care is a, like a, like a piece of the self-love pie, right? Mm-hmm. Um But the self-love is the pie, the whole pie, the whole delicious pie. And so I think that what I talk about inside my own head, and I'm teaching to my daughter right now, who's 10, I've mentioned her twice now, but she's a big part of my life, uh, is positive self-talk. Because we can get caught up in the opposite, right? Like, Oh, I can't keep this house clean. I'm just not a tidy person. Right. Or, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so I, I've been teaching her and she's like, well, I'm going to say in my head, whatever I want about myself. And she's like, I said this to you. Yeah. Cause I was trying to teach her about positive self-talk. And she says, I'm going to say in my head, whatever I want about myself, I don't have to listen to what you're saying. I said, no, you don't, you know, free will. But let me tell you why positive self-talk is a great thing, because it lifts you up. Awareness, self-love, altruism, right? Mm -hmm. It lifts you up. It it also reminds you that you need to respect yourself. And then once you start respecting yourself, then you're going to surround yourself with people who respect you or disrespect. No, you're going to surround yourself with people who treat you kindly and respectfully the way you know, inside you deserve to be treated. What if you talk to yourself not kindly all day? Then you would probably allow other people to talk to you that way. Do you think that is the road to happiness in life? And she sat there and she was like, oh, wow. Because you don't want people to be around you all day speaking unkindly to you. So why would you speak unkindly to yourself? So as much as you can, you pivot when you feel those when you feel that negative voice coming in to tell you that there's something wrong with you. And it's a big lesson that takes a lifetime to learn for some people. So, you know, some people have got it pretty easy, but in my house, it's something that we still work on. So I love the getting tips. So we're talking about love your way and we're talking about how it starts from within that we have to have self-love if we want to match or attract different love situations and also the highest reverence of relationships. So maybe we could do some real tips. You know how there's like stop, drop and roll if you catch on fire. Right. Right. (laughs) Like, so now that we're saying love your way, let's break it up down into some different scenarios. So not only, so let's talk about, let's just talk about Valentine's because you know, there is the reality of Valentine's and just talk about all the ways people do show love and creative then maybe we could talk Mm -hmm. about from a parenting perspective when you're in a relationship and when you're single. How's that? Sure. Okay. So let's go Valentine's. Let's do this almost like let's picture you and I playing charades Mm -hmm. (laughs) or just, or just like stream of consciousness. When you see Valentine's day, what are all the ways that come to mind to show different ways of love that particular day? For me, uh, so I'm just going to just pop, you go out to dinner, you give each other gifts, you, um, you maybe do a massage uh, and all the things that come after a massage, right? Um, You, you might like, you might do something real special that's been needing to be done, like an act of service of, uh, can you, I finally hung that fan in the bedroom, you know, Uh, uh, what else? Um, What do you got? I was thinking scavenger hunts. I'm thinking getting creative, playing. Ooh. I think I left my office mate because I hadn't been into my office because I'm doing so much telehealth. And I was cleaning out my desk at my ocean office. And I left my office mate all these little notes because I just miss her. 
And I left Aww. a post-it on the door. And then we have like these like inner jokes. And I had found something that we wrote 2014 in my desk. And I folded it up and I put, we're still on track. We got this. And like, just like, so sometimes it's nice. And we're talking Valentine's Day, but to leave little post-its or somewhere you're like, what? Or I feel, I feel like on the good old days of instead of just texting or doing something on social media, I think those handwritten cursive cards, I just received oh, yeah. a Valentine's Day um, card from one of my dear friends and there was crossword puzzles and fun stuff and they drew something for me. And I feel oh. like that, that, that little extra, like, you know, it's a, like, I know it's really neat when you get like roses and all this, but when someone makes like a homemade card or even with their own personal touch, I know my, my son's artwork that he's made for me when he was a little kid, it's stuff I'm framing now. And so Mm -hmm. I feel like that personal touch. So for Valentine's and then I think for our kids, I think it's kind of neat to model to them. Like I did to my son, I gave him something beyond like before Valentine's. Mm -hmm. So I was modeling to him that it is love your way and it's love your way every day, right? It's really Mm -hmm. like love your way every day. And I think we covered a lot. I mean, we can talk. I mean, some people. You want it, but single. Yeah. Yeah, go no, there. No, 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 We got the Valentine's Day. Oh, you mean Valentine's Day and then a deep dive for being single or love your way and being single? Um, I, It doesn't matter. Whatever okay. you want. So let's do love your way when you're single. I think when you, I think for me personally, I love, let's build on the self-love, you know, the self-care is a new cool. It's one of the themes of the year. And we talk about awareness, self-love and altruism for fundamental wellness always. But being single, I think it's kind of neat to decide, like for me, I am saying I'm strategically single because I have options to be in relationships right now, but they're not matching up maybe with my, you know, the season of life I'm in, the reality of how much time I would want to give if it was a relationship. So I think it's really important, everyone, if you're single, sometimes even when you hear the word single, just like if you hear the word divorced, Sometimes people automatically like pay attention to your automatic thoughts. This ties in with yeah. what Kathleen was saying about your positive versus negative self-talk. Sometimes, oh, I'm single going into Valentine's Day. What's that all about? Yeah. Like, like, is there something wrong with you? And so right. I think if you are choosing to be single or you loved yourself enough to not be married, I, I think I mentioned that on the show with Kimmy um, Seltzer on Let's Flirt, I said that sometimes a divorce could actually be an act of self-love because neither you nor your partner are growing anymore. So for Mm -hmm. me, the first step is that foundation of self-love and that I'm strategically single. So if you are single and you're having any like, what's wrong with me, what's going on, maybe reframe your own thinking around that Mm -hmm. and ask yourself, do I want to be single? Do I want a relationship? And if you're wanting a relationship, ask yourself, like take inventory. How much time do you have? Do you Are you a single parent? Are you um, someone who wants to have a baby in a certain amount of time? Do you um, Did you just get out of a relationship? And do you need to take a mindful pause mm-hmm. and maybe go on a certain amount of dates to kind of see what you're interested in? I think that when you, when you say, I'm single, look and see what your own needs are in that moment. And then mm-hmm. I can tell you from the dating apps, and then I, I would think I mentioned this on this Let's Flirt show, I am so excited about, hopefully, knock on wood, we are rolling out of some of this pandemic and that we can start to see each other more in person. Because right. I find being single, that kind of like sassy, flirty fun where you get to hear someone's voice and you get to see their outfit and you kind of have more of a multi-sensory like pow, pow, pow. I you know, I really want to go flirt with that person. <laughs> so I think if you're single, you have to, like Kimmy Seltzer said, diversify your portfolio, so to speak. Like, so have some online app stuff going on, um, have maybe uh-huh. a professional event or a work event, or maybe have a good friend set you up. So Uh I think not just like really thinking and asking yourself, what does it mean to be single? And do I like it? Now, a couple of my friends and I have like been like, oh, my gosh, we kind of like being single. And what we like about it is our house can be a little messier. Like I know when I was um, married to different men with different neuro styles, one of the neuro styles was so, so clean, which is kind of cool in some ways, but kind of annoying in another. And I would remember when I would get home from work, I would put my my 
bag on the table. And he would be like, no, 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 put it away. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I think when <laughs> I'd like her to go hide the work bag. I mean, the house looked good, but anyway, so like if you are single and it's like, love your way every day, ask yourself, are you kind of owning it? Are you happy to be single? Or do you want to try to work towards attracting a partner? So I think it's also like knowing yourself, like you mentioned self-love and then knowing your audience. And then let me just give some tips and I'll let you comment because I, I feel like I'm finding out my level of communication with flirting is like getting like really precise. Like I know how to like in my own flirting assess on the call or how to look, am I even going to meet this person? Right. So I think if you are journaling or working out or doing something and you kind of know your own love language, you can check in when you're trying to attract a partner, like what are their favorite hobbies? What are their love languages? And I think a lot of people don't know how to talk about their own sexuality, like sexual fantasies, play, you know, have you had a relationship that was highly loving and highly sexual? Cause you're kind of trying to figure out their potential for intimacy that matches your intimacy. Right. So I hope that Which covered is important. a lot. It did. You know, what um, What we covered parenting in terms of Valentine's Day, but let's talk about love your way in parenting. Do you want to give an example? I have an example that just happened like in the last give 36 it. hours that I don't even think give you know it. about. Well, my, you know what, I want to just honor my son's privacy, but he found out about something at school in a way that wasn't so direct. Mm -hmm. And so he really needed me as a mom, I'm a single mom. And his stepdad lives out of the country right now. And I'm really fortunate, you know, shout out to all you parents and all the different relationships where in different ages our kids are at, because there's different seasons where they knock on our door and they talk to us. And there's different seasons when they might not. So I'm at a season, gratefully, um, where my son really comes to me and he was mm -hmm. really upset when he found out that he wasn't even given this option for something at school. Like it wasn't made into his awareness. And okay. so I, a part of being showing love in my way for my son is he needs quality time and he yes. needs me to listen to him. And he knocked on my door and we went through all the scenarios of the way he's almost 13, all the, the scenarios of the way we could handle this. And he needed to let me know his upset feelings, his angry feelings, even his fantasies of how angry he was. And mm -hmm. I even said to him, that's really good to say what you're thinking, but you're not going to do that. He's like, Oh, absolutely not. So when we're, when we're holding sacred space for our children, it's important to model to them that it's okay to have all their feelings. Mm -hmm. And then how do you help them navigate so this was a sacred space way. And I was so proud of him. I asked him, do you want me, this is yesterday. Um, do you want me to change my patient schedule so I can go with you to school? Do you need any help with that talk that you want to talk with this person, the teacher about? He's like, no, I've got it, mom. He goes, you've mm -hmm. done your job right now. I'll <laughs> let you know. He actually said that like he was my coach. He's like, <laughs> you've done, yeah, and this is on the way to school. He's like, um, you've done what you can do. And now it's my turn. And I, when I, picked wow. him up yesterday, I know, can you imagine? Mm -hmm. And then when I, he got in the car, he's like, I had that talk with Miss da, 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 da. And I said, did I go, this is the first thing I said to him. Did you feel respected during the talk? And he goes, I felt respected mom. So mm -hmm. I also like encourage you as a parent when you're teaching, um, when you're holding space for your child and you're being loving for them, ask them what they need. That's a very poor, here, I need to, I feel like I wish I had a ding, 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 ding. Ask, ask, no matter what it is, whether you're single or a parent or your spouse, you can ask someone in the moment, how can I help you? How can I be there for you? What do you need? So when you do that, you're actually having a greater synergy with you and that person. Yeah. Sometimes my son's like, I don't want to talk about it right now, mom. I'm like, okay, well, I'm here. And I right. and like, even like another example is, I don't know if you find that being in the car is the time when, when you're driving your kids somewhere, that's where you get all the juicy stuff. Oh yeah. I mean, and parents have always told me that and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it's like, I mean, we sit in the driveway, like we don't get out of the car then when we arrive home. 
Wow. Because, yeah. And then I have this neighbor who's always walking and she wants to come up and tap on the window and say hi. And, it, and then finally she got the clue, like, this is our bonanza time. Like, please don't interrupt. <laughs> I know you're being social, but this is the most special time. Yes. And I always thought those parents were like, oh, yeah, yeah, all the car, uh, uh, but it is real. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to add anything. So so love your way as a parent. I think it's knowing your own child's unique neuro style, the same thing with any relationship, how they process right. and perceive things. And my son is on like a sensory overload. And I am too these days. I, maybe we can talk about that's part of self-awareness. Mm -hmm. I find that because I've been doing mostly telehealth and a lot of these shows that it takes a lot more energy now that things are opening up in my neck of the woods. I'm like, oh my goodness, I have a plan Friday and Sunday. <gasps> Should I cancel my Saturday plans? That just seems like too much energetically. And yeah. so my own son from a sensory style back to parenting, he likes the car really quiet when I pick him up. So I drive to his pickup area, blasting my music and all happy and then once he gets in, it's like almost like I have it all quiet because okay. he's been on, he's been on all day long yes. as like a comedian. Yes. And so mm -hmm. he needs me as a parent to mop, to mirror what he needs. And I even, this is one last tip. I said to him one time, I go, you know, I actually want to ask you how your day is, but you kind of told me that it's better when I don't do that every day that you'll just let me know. So I just want you to know, I always care about how your day is. So even if we're just quiet in the car on the way home. Right. It's because I'm actually respecting you. He's like, oh, no, thanks, mom. No, I did tell you that. And, you know, I do share when I want. So I it's, also think it's important to do check ins with them to see if they're OK with that. Right. Right. Even though you've established this little routine of not of not doing too much asking about school. I, I sent um, my cousin to get my daughter at the bus stop last week or this week. I can't remember. And um, my cousin was not asking too many questions, but talking a lot. And my daughter says, she says, I think that I've had enough of talking for now. Wow. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. And I, wow. I checked in with, I checked in with my cousin. Are you okay? Cause she, you know, she's not familiar with, with this kind of thing. And she's like, no, she just was polite and made it very clear that she needed some quiet time and she verbalized it. Can I just make you laugh? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Shh, shush time. And by the way, I, as you know, have an awareness that I talk a lot. So <laughs> while I'm flirting with guys, because because when they first want to get to know you, they want to hear you. But then I'm like, I just want you to know I'm shushing myself right now. Shh. And this guy I was flirting with him last night. I'm probably going to baby go out of my comfort zone and meet for like a kiss date tonight. Who knows? I don't know. I probably might cancel. <laughs> But anyways, in the, in the flirt zone of loving my way, I have an awareness and I literally, Kathleen, I would go to myself, I go, shh, okay, I'm being shush. I want to hear you now. Mm. <laughs> and I like, let the person know, I go, I get really excited. And so if you ever need to shush me, let's shush. So I think it's no. also fun. <laughs> like, like, love your oh, way. I've never shushed you. I, you can now. You can shush me. We can even do that on the show. You'll be like, shh my turn but like but like to me <laughs> that's hysterical but no but shushing I mean the, but the fact that yeah. your daughter the fact that you just brought that up that your daughter had an awareness so to me mm -hmm. we're going to talk about couples and romance for that way before we wrap up but having an awareness of your own neuro style and when you've had like sensory overload or empath overload or I even looked at my day to day and I said to you Kathleen when I woke up I was like gosh, I looked at my day and I had so many patients on it and my voice didn't sound like it does right now. You know, when you wake up in the morning, it's a little bit off and you're figuring it out. So I just gave myself the gift of moving a third of my patients to next week because I had just gotten over bronchitis last month and I don't want to push it. So yeah. I think this idea of loving your way every day is with self-love and then how do you communicate and have resonance with one another? So we just gave some really precise examples of your daughter being really empowered and my son being really empowered of, yeah. he actually said, I go, Karen, what is the one thing you would have wanted them to do differently at school? And he goes, mom, they should have given me a chance. 
I wanted them to at least give me a chance to try. Yeah. And I go, well, maybe that, do you want to write that down? He's like, no, I'll remember to talk about that. So when he got in the car, he said, mom, they're giving me a chance. I'm like, wow. And like, Mm -hmm. I really empowered, like you did that. So I think as a parent, really Mm -hmm. empowering your child that they are the captain of their own ship. To me, that's what we're supposed to do as parents. We hold that space for them, loving them, but then we encourage them to love themselves and feel that good sense of self-esteem and self-mastery. And so for your daughter to say, okay, I've had enough talking now. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. Go, go mm-hmm. her. I did, you know, I would yeah. follow up with a compliment, maybe even write her a little note of saying, wow, yeah. you really put some efforts in to talking and socializing, but you knew your limit. And I'm so proud of you that you politely said, I need to kind of like shush now. Well, you know, and we're, we're a- allegedly just talking about parenting, but this, this also works in a relationship, you know, I mean, knowing when and commu- knowing when the other needs a break, knowing when the other, or l- allowing a sp- safe space to be able to communicate, like, I just need to decompress right now. And, you know, that that's, that's as important for a relationship to thrive as um, something that, you know, listen, we teach our little kids well this, then they go and they form these well-adjusted relationships where they can say that without malice or you know, anger or weirdness and the other person will get it and respect it if they've chosen well. So when you're talking about this, this segues into like love your way every day in a relationship, like in a couple, in a marriage, in a partnership. And I can say I've had, you know, 28 years of four different relationships that were significant. So I have experience at being married. And one thing that I would do transitioning and maybe we can just discuss love your way, you know, with our, with our relationships. When I would go from a day of psychiatry and be driving home, I would get my almost like mom wife hat on. Yeah. And I would purposely make be mindfully aware and hit the pause in the driveway and check in with myself. Was it a tough day? Do I look a little bit irritated? Do, am I frustrated? Am I frenetic? Did I get all my calls done? So instead of just bringing that energy straight, in, by the way, I know there's days when I did just bring the energy and I'm just talking about yeah. the day when I like took the pause, Yeah, I would call like a mindful pause to not be frenetic. And sometimes I would do a text saying really intense day, but you know, I'd love to watch a show later or what's for dinner. So it's almost like you're setting the stage for the best communication in your family. Right. Life. And I remember one of my, my older um, stepson, I'm amicably divorced, but I am really still very fortunate to have these lovely people in my life, you know, from a dis, you know, from a little third in college and graduated. But I remember my um, stepson really picked up on the pulse of everyone's mood in the house. He's more like me, very empathic. And I remember walking in one day before dinner and saying, everyone, I just want you to know if my face doesn't look as happy or if I seem a little irritated, I had a very stressful day at work. So please, I don't want you to take that on and I might not be as talkative tonight. So I, it's almost like a check-in. Mm-hmm. And when we do that, that shows vulnerability. It shows transparency and it allows mm-hmm. other people to check in and mirror back to you. Yeah, that's lovely. And it works, you know, it, it, that that really works in home life. And and listen, it, like you could even translate that to your professional life, right? Like, okay, we're going to just, you know, I usually, I used to work all the time with just basically one partner. And I, you know, I could be like, that baby woke me up four times in the middle of the night. So we're going to just get through this day. And, you know, just setting the stage, like, okay, we're, I want you to know that I'm, I'm going to be tired, maybe a little cranky, short tempered, but we're going to get through this day. And we're going to, we're going to love working by the end of the day, we're going to have loved working with each other. So, I mean, this, this translates into all aspects of life. Yeah. It's communication. communication. Yeah. I love it. So can we kind of just right here at the end, do like almost like a spice it up for the last couple minutes? <laughs> sure. I, I know. something funny to bring to the table, but I'm like, I'm not sure Dr. Denise is going to like this. Oh, so, okay. Go for want- it. Throw, put me in the hot seat. Hot seat yeah. moment. Hot seat, so, go for it. You know, we're, we talk about all this love and kumbaya, 
there's a um, uh, police department here in Florida. And in fact, it's kind of, uh, there's a couple states where uh, police departments have done this. They kicked off February online with post telling people that um, this Valentine's Day month long special starts off with a set of limited edition platinum bracelets, free transportation with the chauffeur, a one night minimum stay in a luxurious accommodations and professional glamour shops that will be posted online for all to enjoy. If you, if you turn in your ex, <laughs> Oh my God. Send your, send your ex to jail for Valentine's day. And I was like, Oh, this is not the loving spirit. Denise is going to look for but it's funny. Don't this forget. Is an article? You, yes. Don't No, This isn't just an article. This is the, this is the port orange police in Florida. Don't forget who did you wrong this Valentine's day. We'll send your ex to jail. Do they have an outstanding warrant? Are they driving around with drugs in their car? Give us a call. Ooh, Kathleen. This I know. Is, this is like a whole other topic. This, I don't even want to go there because I have someone in what I call a spiritual chokehold right now. Um, oh, that did right. do me wrong. Yeah. So yeah. I know it sounds funny, but when it actually resonates with someone who did, that you know that should be in jail. Um, yep. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Well, thank you, Kath. Maybe put the link to that so everyone knows that sometimes I will. love your way means you want to stay away. Love your way and stay away is another part. So we're covering all of it. Like, do you right? are you finding that this Valentine's Day that you wish that they were in a prison jumpsuit? Do you wish that they were handcuffed to the bed and that you don't even want to have intimacy? Do you feel like you're just coming out of a relationship with a sociopath or a narcissist where you want to throw the Valentine's Day candy somewhere in the car trash? You too can t talk to the police. So thank you. So that's another feeling state, Kat. Thank you for um, bringing that <laughs> and, up. And for those of I, us who want our exes in prison uh, or people we know. <laughs> okay. So I want to talk about just at the end here, because it is Valentine's Day and I know from being in like very like loving relationships that, you know, they were loving for the time they needed to be. A lot of times we get lazy in love and in, in our romantic partnership, lazy in love, lazy in love. Yeah. Yes. And we don't do those extra compliments. Like that Wendy mentioned, like how her husband, they do coffee and they just love each other. And I, I actually wanted to make a point that when she said that she doesn't celebrate Valentine's, but she goes all out for St. Patrick's Day. But it wasn't because it was St. Patrick's. It was because the individual meaning of it being her husband's birthday. So right. she was into more strategic specifying and honoring her spouse. So I think people, I don't know about you, but a lot of men love lingerie and love when women, and I, by the way, I don't want to be gender. There's pronouns, gender female, they's, she's. So whether it's heterosexual, I just want to make sure I'm being all inclusive because I work with all different communities. But I think if you know that someone really gets physically attracted, you know, you can like wrap up like a, a, like lingerie that you would want to wear for them, but you can give it to them as a gift. You can like, if you really want to race it up, you can do more fantasy play. You can send them like a story. I had one woman in my practice, um, the man that she loved, loved when she like took herself out of her comfort zone with fantasy play and mm -hmm. she's a super gifted writer so she wrote him like the sexiest story that was like something out of penthouse forum <laughs> so like like you can really like challenge yourself to really just i you know one of the themes this year's deep play so i think deep play is like love your way every day and if you're not feeling it like you just mentioned hey <laughs> you can be having and not feeling it but there's other days when you want to up your game and like really spice it up, do you have any spice it up ideas that, or does something come to mind or do you ever cover a news story that was like, wow, they went, they really went all out. Um, well, one of my favorite stories is the people who went all out. They were running a marathon and they stopped in the middle of the marathon and actually got married. Wow. I thought, I always, yeah. I thought that was really a spicy way to begin. Um, you know, go down the path together. Um, so there, you know, and lots of fun proposals that I've seen on, on, I've, gosh, I've seen it on the air, you know, somebody comes in and proposes to the news anchor. I've seen that done where I've worked. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, th- listen, your your imagination's limitless. What it, you're only bound by what you can come up with, and you know what what's comfortable and and appreciated by your partner. Well, I wanted to say something too. I get really motivated and stimulated to show up as like my best best version of myself when I'm wearing like different pieces of jewelry, or I wear these really cute hats, and I'll buy new ones. And it's for me, like right now, because we're doing audio only. I'm in this like luxurious robe and before I had this really fun playful hat and I like have my coffee cup that says something that makes me happy so I think one way to love your way every day is to show up with like your own like languages of love back to yourself because Mm -hmm. that energy frequency then is felt by whoever it is your your business partner your children your spouse your possible hot date so I think there's so much multi-sensory fun input Mm -hmm that we can mm-hmm. do at any moment in time. So is there anything else we didn't cover today? No, I'm loving it. I love the, you get, uh, Denise has to always end with a rrr, 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 and I think that's a perfect place to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also do dun, dun, dun. I have these like fun things I do in my mind because sometimes I, I, okay, shh, shh, everyone. I hear really sad things sometimes throughout my day. I'm an adult and child psychiatrist. So I have to figure out like word thoughts or actions that make me go from crisis into stabilization and then into play or thrive. So my rural is a form of going, Hey, let's go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I love it. So Kath, and thank let's, you. Go ahead. Let's leave everybody with the, 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 the name of the show. It's just so we just, we just love it. Love your way every day. I love that. I'm going to remember that. Love your way every day. All right. Thank you, Kathleen. Thanks, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day every day.